This is going to be experiment one, basic techniques. I'm going to take you through uh, the entire experiment in pieces, starting from the beginning, so that we can make sure we learn all of these skills, have them down pat, because a lot of these skills form the basis for the other experiments as well. So I've got my uh, lab printout right here. Uh, I've got, uh, and it tells us that we need a three milliliter plastic pipette, a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. Uh, oops, I have my 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. 25 or 50 will work. I've got a 100 milliliter beaker. I've got a 250 or 300 milliliter beaker. Uh, either one is fine. The sizes are approximate. Um, I've also got my 50 milliliter beaker here. And the 100 and the 50, you can use either one for this experiment. I've also got my water. And what you want to do before you start this experiment is get about 400 milliliters of water. And I have about 360 or so. Uh, when it says get 400 milliliters of water, it means very approximately. Uh, 500 is still fine. 300 is still fine for this experiment. Um, you're not really measuring it. You're just getting a lot. And one of the things we'll learn from this experiment is that beakers are good for holding solutions. They are not necessarily good at being able to measure solutions accurately. Although, well, that's part of what we're learning in this experiment. So um, you get this, uh, you let this sit for 15 minutes before you start the experiment. That's the first instruction is, and we might as well do that right at the beginning. So even before you start listening to this, get your water. Tap water is fine. It calls for distilled water, but uh, I actually have uh, tap water here because uh, I don't have any distilled water today. Uh, let's see. Um, I have my scale and I have my temperature probe. And uh, my temperature probe looks like this. Uh, your temperature probe might be a little different color, um, but in general, you want to remove the cap when you use it. You want to hit the on off button. And depending upon which one you have, and I guess I can set this down here. Um, so this one reads in parts per million when you turn it on. And then if you hit the mode button twice, it reads in degrees Celsius. And we will always want degrees Celsius. And we will always record all the digits on this, so we will always record your tenths place. All right, well, let's turn that off for now. Put it away. We have everything we need to do the experiment. Um, normally, we read the introduction because it's got lots of good information in it, including how to do a bunch of these calculations and examples. Um, your pre-lab uh, questions, you do them uh, in your learning management system. We will come back to this table to get the density values for water at a specific temperature. And here's our procedure. Our procedure says, fill about 400 milliliters of distilled water into a clean beaker and let it equilibrate to room temperature, which means let it sit for at least 15 minutes. And equilibrate to room temperature means whatever temperature this comes out of the tap as or out of the distilled water bottle, um, you just let it sit there so that it comes to the same temperature as the room. And we'll be checking the temperature too. All right, so following along, record the mass of a clean 250 milliliter beaker. To record the mass, make sure that the outside of your beaker and your scale are both clean and dry. With the scale empty, set the scale to zero. And I can do this here. So I'm gonna turn my scale on. And when it comes on, it will say zero. And then you're looking at that little circle right there. That means it's set. So you don't want to put anything on until that circle appears, that little circle with a, a little dot in it. You want to be in grams. And then you're going to measure the mass of your 100 milliliter beaker. And my 100 milliliter beaker, again, wait for that little dot to appear is 11.16 grams. Yours will likely be different. So 11.16 grams. And let's see if you can see my, there we go. 11.16 uh, grams. 
I have my tables here and 11.16 grams is going to go in my massive beaker. And I'll put the G there. When you put it into the Google Sheet, you won't put G. And so another way to do it is just put the G there so you know that the grams are there. Now I'm going to take the temperature of my water. And for the temperature of my water, I'm going to remove my cap on my, uh, it's not the pH one, it's the other one. I'm going to press and hold to turn it on. I'm going to press mode twice to get it into temperature mode. And then I'm going to put it in only up to about right there, only where the cap goes. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to swirl it around for five or 10 seconds. And mine's not changing very much. Mine says 26.3 degrees Celsius. If it says something 0, .0 you still write the zero down. 26.3 degrees. I'm going to give it a little shake, set it down, write the temperature, 26.3 degrees. And these are going to be degrees Celsius. And I think I actually have units in the Google Sheet, but just to be sure. All right, so following along in our procedure, we just did number two, uh, record the mass, record the temperature, we just did number three. Go on to number four. Number four says condition the pipette with distilled water. This is the definite skill that we're going to use. So um, I'm going to use, let's see, this 250 or 300, mine has markings to 300, milliliter beaker to be my uh, waste beaker. And when you condition something, you're gonna rinse the pipette three times with your water, such that the distilled water or just tap water coats all surfaces on the inside of the pipette. And so what I typically do is I'm gonna just sort of squeeze it up. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'm only filling it to right there. And there's an air gap, that's fine. Turn it upside down, let it drain down, shake it out, it comes back, squeeze it out as much as you can. That's once, do that three times. Because we don't know what's inside this. There could be residue from the manufacturing process. Um, hopefully not, but just in case, we want whatever solution is in here um, to take everything out that was in there before. Maybe somebody else used this pipette. I don't think so, but just in case, because that's the thing, we're always making sure that we're getting exactly the chemicals that we want. All right, so you saw me do that three times. That is always what conditioning means. Conditioning means rinse three times with a small amount. And now I'm going to deliver 2.0 milliliters of the equilibrated water into the pre-weighed beaker. So I have my pre-weighed beaker. I'm going to deliver two milliliters. And two milliliters is going to be on this. There's a two mark. And I'm going to squeeze it, put it down into the water pick it up and I'm gonna look straight across and get it just at that line. And it's hard to see that line. There it is. And get it just at that line. And then I'm gonna very carefully, with no air gap, and you can squeeze it out a couple extra times to get everything out. And there may be a drop on the inside in there. That's okay. Squeeze it out as much as you can and get everything you can. And let's see how it does. So that is deliver two milliliters, 2.0 milliliters. And it doesn't look like very much. Now I'm going to turn my scale back on. I'm going to weigh my solution. And now it weighs 12.78. And these are grams. And then I'm going to do it again. And let's see if I can get this on both on here. There we go. And I'm not going to empty this. And that's what the instructions say. It says, record the mass, 
uh, sorry, I'm on number uh, seven, then repeat the measurement multiple times without emptying our beaker between trials. So I have my first two milliliters. I'm gonna do my second two milliliters. Again, squeeze, put it under, suck it up very carefully without getting any air bubbles. Move it over and squeeze it out until it all comes out. And then I will weigh it again. And this time I get 14.51, not emptying it. Again, so squeeze it out. Right to the two milliliter line. Squeeze it out. And this time I get 16.24. And that is the data. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I saw just this one digit here and I thought I forgot to write down the other digit. But for temperature, there's only a tenth spice. And we always write down all the digits, even if they're zeros. And um, that's the data for this step. And uh, I want to go over how to calculate the um, mass of water. So uh, here we have beaker plus water, and here we have beaker. So to calculate the mass of water in this first air box, it's going to be 12.78 minus 11.16. And I forgot my calculator. Let me just grab it. And it's going to be 12.78 minus 11.16. I get 1.62. And these are going to be grams again. Now for this one, I so I was here and I put in two more milliliters. So the subtraction for the number that goes here is 14.51 minus 12.78. 1.73. And now the number that goes in this box here, 16.24 minus 14.51. One point seven three, and uh, that's because so when you don't empty it, you have to go back to the previous number. What we'll see when we do the uh, graduated cylinder is that we will empty it, and so we will go back to just the beaker. But this is for not emptying it, and this is how you uh, figure out well. Uh, so this is most of table number one. While we're here, let's go ahead and complete table number one. Table number one on the next page is going to ask you to write down the density values. And the density is going to be mass of water over volume of water. Let's go ahead and work that out, at least for the first one here. So D equals... 1.62 grams over our volume of water, 2.0 milliliters. And again, I'll get my calculator for this. One point six two divided by two point zero. Of course you don't have to put in the zeros in the calculator. I get zero point eight one. And none of my units cancel, so my units are grams per milliliter. And we'll put our density in here in grams per milliliter. And we'll just put 0 0.81 there. And I'll let you do the other two. I will point out that with 
one, two, three significant figures on top, and one, two significant figures on the bottom, that when you uh, do this subtraction, you do get two significant figures, that's the 0.81. The zero is not significant, it is a placeholder. And while we're here, uh, I remember, let me just show you how to do the 12.78 minus 11.16. I always do significant figures for addition and subtraction by what's called stacking them up. I do the subtraction and I can do it under my calculator. I get 1.62 grams and the way significant figures works for adding and subtracting is different than multiplication and division and so it's least number of decimal places. And since each of these have two decimal places, I drew a line at the two decimal places point, and you can see that even though both of these numbers that I'm subtracting have four significant figures, the answer has three significant figures. One, two, three. That's table one. We'll pick up next time with table two.